This week on Check Please South Florida, a spot for authentic Mexican cuisine in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, I literally felt like I was in Mexico City for dinner. An Asian bistro in Boca Raton. The lobster bomb, it's the bomb. And a Mexican Asian gastropub in Coconut Creek. It was a huge plate, enough for maybe five people. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world. Additional funding for Check Please South Florida is provided by George and Helen Weaver and the Friends of South Florida PBS. You just wanted to savor every bit of that dessert. It's delicious. The best tiramisu I've ever had. There's nothing else like that in South Florida that I know about. You'll pull the cheese and it'll be all the way up to here. Hello, I'm Michelle Bernstein and welcome to Check Please South Florida, the show where regular people from all over South Florida recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week we have three guests, each recommends his or her favorite spot and then the other two go to check them out and see what they think. This week, accountant Larry Levy says that his pick has become a family favorite thanks to their upbeat service and relaxed atmosphere. He says you'll always have plenty of leftovers at this good vibes only spot in Coconut Creek. Music major Alec Vargas says that he's never met a piece of food he doesn't like and that his pick is the place where all of his foodie dreams come true. With generous portions and beautiful presentations, his spot in Boca Raton is the place where you'll want to be. But first, orchestra conductor Lorraine Marks says her pick is a perfect melody of rich culture, authentic flavors. It's a happy-go-lucky spot where you'll make new friends and dance the night away. Get ready for an end-of-dinner celebration at this festive spot. It's located in Fort Lauderdale, and it's called Casa Frida. Hi, my name is Victor Bocos and I'm the co-owner of Casa Frida Mexican Cuisine. My wife and myself, we decided to open Casa Frida to bring the authentic Mexican cuisine to Florida and at the same time to be able to eat our food. Mexican cuisine is one of the oldest cuisines in the world and is compared to some of the most traditional cuisines from Europe. It's complex, rich, and it has a lot of diversity. What we do here, we do a combination of traditional, authentic Mexican dishes, and at the same time, we do people's favorite dishes. We do dishes from the north, from the south, from different states of Mexico, so people get the opportunity to try different flavors in what the real Mexican cuisine is. The decoration here is inspired in Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Casa Frida Mexican Cuisine is the food of Mexico. So what do people expect when they walk in to Casa Frida? A celebration. It's so beautiful inside. Is that Everything is decorated, the ceilings, the walls. Even as you come into the parking lot, there's a picture of Frida Kahlo <laughs> right there on one of the walls. You really feel so festive when you come in there. One of the most fun parts of the restaurant is when they take out the hats and everybody dances around. It's really a lot of what fun. What do they do with the hats? Well, they have a certain t part of the evening where they play all kinds of music videos okay. from, from all kinds of Spanish backgrounds in Mexico. Right. And they give everybody a hat, and we all kind of like get festive. Did oh, and they give out drinks. Put on a hat? <laughs> no, but I was wondering where the hats were. Yeah. Like, I was with my friend, I was like, I want one of these hats, but like they had a few people. Did they like, not pop part. out when you? Uh... No, when, when I was there, there were people that had hats on, like there were party people, there was a bunch of parties, everybody had a hat on. It was really cool, actually, and they did the music thing, it was really fun. Yeah. So how did it feel when you arrived? What did you think? It was amazing. Like, it was probably, I agree with you, like, it was totally, like, cultural. They had, like, all the nice paintings on the wall. It felt like I was literally, like, in, like, a little Mexico type of restaurant. Like, I literally felt like I was in Mexico City for dinner. Yeah, I had a dish that they used to bury in the ground. Barbacoa de Borrego. Yes. Yeah, which I've made before. Oh, it was so it's delicious. delicious. Yeah. Everything was so tender and just almost melted in your mouth. Did they serve it in taco style? Yes, they did. Yeah. It was really great. Yeah. Never had anything Barbacoa like that. Barbacoa is really yummy. It takes a long time to make. Yes. I could really appreciate all the flavors as you taste it. It's just the, the texture of it was just so soft and almost melted in your mouth. It was that right. good. So what else did you have for dinner? 
we had friends together, so we kind of tasted each other's food. And dessert, you said? Yes, um, we had churros. Yeah, oh yeah. My gosh, they were so delicious. The Mexican really donut. Really soft, really soft and warm. Were they filled with anything or just No, them? actually, okay. um, they had delicious ice cream on the side oh. and dulce de leche finishing to it. Dulce de leche, so was oh. that to scoop into? Or? Yeah, dip it, dip Yum. it in there. It's like and, caramel, oh. right? Yeah, delicious. It was really, so like delicious, you could tell that it was just freshly baked. What else did you have that was savory? Because I know you had the pork belly. Pork bellies, we had a supreme fajitas which had chicken, shrimp, and steak, and it came hot. You had queso fundido? Yeah. How was that? Do that was really good. Yeah, I remember it. it um, Did it have chorizo in it? They usually have chorizo in it. Is that the, like the seasoning? It's sausage. Oh, yeah, it had some sausage on it. Okay. But it was so good, you, you know, you take it out on the taco, mm -hmm. and you dip into it. Really good. We had some interesting guacamole that had mango on it. I never oh, really? had that before. You had kind of like mm. fruit in, mixed into it. It was very how good. tropical. Yeah. And how about you? Tell me, Alec, you haven't talked to me about food yet. What did you have that night? Well, I probably had, uh, it was my favorite actually of the meals, I'd say. It was a tour of Mexico, something a like that. Tour of yeah, Mexico. Tour of Mexico. So yeah, they had, it was like one of the specialties they had. It was like a lamb, pork, and something else. They had were like they a, tacos or were they? No, it was like they had meat and then they gave you tortillas on the side. So if you want to make your own tacos. To make your own tacos. Yeah, okay. so you could do that. But the flavor was outstanding. It was like really rich in flavor. Was there one that you liked the best? Uh, it was probably the pork. That was the best one. Okay. And uh, it had like a stuffed uh, bell pepper with like a, a chihuahua cheese, they said. So it was yeah, really chihuahua. good. So chihuahua. the whole thing was really good. And they, uh, here's my favorite part about the dish, actually. They had like a little pot of soup, of like a, a lamb soup on the side. That was amazing. Oh, a broth. It was a broth, yeah. Oh, I love It's like a chaser. Yeah, it was like a chaser. It, yeah. was, it was probably the best soup I've ever had. So I really liked that. Oh, I love a, that. Yeah. And then for dessert, I had the Kahlua flan. Mm. That was really good. I always love flan, so that was that my go-to. That delicious. Yeah, that it was really good. rich. It was really rich, really yeah. tasty, yeah. and it left me smiling, so what Any can I Any cocktails say? for you? Yeah, I had this strawberry margarita, actually. Oh, you did as yeah, well? Yeah, I had it, yeah. too. There we go. It was yeah. three really? of you had yeah. it, too? Yeah, wasn't it a strawberry pineapple? pineapple? I actually don't know. Yeah, oh. I did have a strawberry <laughs> pineapple. pineapple. It was margarita. so good. Margarita, oh, it was so good. We had it in a pitcher. It was a pretty big serving, too. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, it was a good size. It was a little strong for me. I don't really drink that often, but it was pretty good. I liked it. Which is why you don't remember the pineapple. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, that's exactly <laughs> why, actually. Yeah. How were the portions of the food? Portions were, were nice. They were big, plenty of food for my wife and I. We went there, we shared two meals, plenty. Great. And prices? The price was good. For the amount of food that you get and the price and the quality, I don't think you could really beat that. I mean, I shared it with a friend and it was, it was amazing. Okay. Lorraine, Casa Freda was your choice. Sum yes. it up for me. I just love it so much. I recommend it to anybody that would like to have an evening of fun out and great food, terrific atmosphere, and a memorable time. Alec? I said it was pretty good. <laughs> uh, like uh, one word, straight bussin' for all my uh, linguistic friends out there. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Larry? Definitely going back, uh, an enjoyable place, and we like it. You can bring your appetite and dance shoes to Casa Freda, located at 5441 North Federal Highway in Fort Lauderdale. They are open for lunch and dinner Monday to Thursday, and for breakfast, lunch, and dinner Friday to Sunday. Yum. Chilaquiles. Reservations are accepted, where the average price for dinner without drinks is about $50. Queso fundido is one of my absolute favorite addictions. Now, usually it has a little chorizo in it, but I wasn't really in the mood for chorizo right now, so I've decided to fake the chorizo with chorizo spices. We'll start by cooking, and then I will tell you all about the flavors. So I'm gonna heat a little bit of oil in a cast iron pan, and I'm using cast iron, first of all, it's one of my favorite things, but also, because we're gonna serve the fundido right out of this cast iron pan. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is saute some tiny minced onions. You can use white or yellow. And some fresh minced garlic. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the spices that I'm using. I've got some chili powder some smoked paprika, 
some regular paprika, a little bit of cumin, and finally some dried oregano. Once that is soft, go ahead and add cheese. So there's a lot of different cheeses that you can use in your queso fundido, but you wanna just make sure that they are melting cheeses. And this is already starting to melt. It's getting all gooey all the way around the outside of the pan, which is what we're looking for. The last thing I'll add before it totally melts down is a little bit of these hatch chilies. And if you don't like things spicy, then don't use them. And this is something you're gonna wanna serve immediately. As soon as it's done melting, throw it in the middle of your friends or family table. Make sure you protect the cast iron and let them dip in and have some fun. I think our fundido is pretty much fundido. It is definitely melted. So let me just bring it back together, shut this off. And this is going to be a little bit hot. Bring this to the center. And look at that delicious, delicious gooiness. Let me show you how good this looks. Get that chip right in there. And that is what we're looking for, everybody. Queso fundido. Provecho. Yum. Now music major Alec Vargas says his pick will offer a dining experience that everyone will enjoy. It's located in Boca Raton and it's called Sushi Yama Asian Bistro. Hi, my name is Adam Putawang. I'm the owner of Sushi Yama Asian Bistro. We've been here on this location in Boca Raton since 1996, December 1996. Most popular of our menu, the item is the signature roll, super rainbow, super yama, and lobster bombs, of course. The first time here, I come to this space that I want to create something like some part of the authentic and some part of the modern, like con contemporary, uh, to, to mix it up with the young kid, like sit, sitting on the floor, which is the kid or the young teenager, they love that. Sushiyama Asian Bistro is a great place and delicious for Asian cuisine. I know you love this place. I do but, love this place. Yeah, tell me first about the location. Uh, the location is actually really nice. It's in Boca. Like uh, when I was actually driving there, uh, I was really surprised. Like just driving there was really nice. Like there were li nice lakes on the road going there. So I felt like I was in it's a in really a strip. Yeah, it's in a strip. It's in a strip mall actually. Okay. Uh, it's really nice. Like I wouldn't say it's in like uh, some like insanely nice location, but like for what it is, it's like a hidden gem, is what I'd call it. Lorraine, what did you think? I was surprised when I walked into the restaurant. It looked like a small little entrance, and all of a sudden you go in there. It's a huge restaurant. Is there outdoor seating? There is. Do you know? Yes. Is there? I like yeah, it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend sitting outside though, unless you're really just like wanting to be outside, because like the inside really brings you into like the experience of itself. Like you can get sushi anywhere, but like if you want to have a real sushi experience, go inside, because it's really authentic. Do you usually sit at the bar? Uh, no, I actually sat at a booth. Okay. And they actually, what's really cool about the place, they have like booths you could sit on like traditional style, so you could go in and you like sit on the floor like family style yeah. eating like they would do in Asia. So I thought that was a really cool dish. Oh, they addition. have floor seating too? Yeah, they do. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. I love that. Yeah. What did you think about the service, Larry? I thought the service was great. We, our waiter didn't rush us. We, he gave us all the time we needed and even made a few suggestions. So Lovely. we loved it. Do you eat Japanese food a lot? Um, yeah, we have sushi every once in a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was good. So tell me what you had this last time you went. So I had a, just an assortment of everything, honestly. Like we start with some appetizer, like I always start with a miso soup. It's just my favorite miso soup I love. And the miso soup here was actually really good, so I liked that. But we also had a steamed gyoza. That was really good. You want to tell people what gyoza is? Uh, I could kind of tell you, but it's I don't know Japanese exactly. It's a Japanese pork dumpling. Okay, thank you, because <laughs> I, I didn't know, know how to word that. <laughs> so, so I can I always that. be your culinary guide. And you. so you can get it usually fried or, well, pan fried yeah. or steamed and you order yeah, steamed. Yeah, we had it steamed. And the sauce that came with it honestly made the dish 10 times better. I mean, the pork itself was already good, but the, the sauce was amazing. 
And then what for else? my entree, I, we got a bunch of rolls. I shared it with my friends. So we had like the rainbow roll, a dragon roll, a spicy tuna roll. What did you have? I had a Vietnamese uh, pancake as, as an appetizer. Oh, it was really did you crispy. like it? I love yeah, Vietnamese I loved pancakes. It. It's so delicious and it had little shredded vegetables inside of it yeah. and I believe it had some shrimp in it too. Did it, have, okay. it was really good. And a dipping sauce to yes. go with it, right? Yeah, a nice sweet dipping sauce. Oh, I lovely. Like that. Yeah. What else did you have? I had the teriyaki seafood. Okay. And uh, Which means what? Well, um, it had like scallops, it had lobster also, oh, wow. shrimps. All with teriyaki sauce? Yes. Okay. It was really nice. You also had a, an udon soup, udon noodle soup. I think yes. it was called the navayaki. Is yes. that true? Yeah, yeah. It was really... What flavor was that? Uh, it was like a beef broth flavor. Oh, nice. Yeah. It was udon, my son's favorite. Larry? We had the... Celebration roll. The celebration roll. I love and that name. I don't know what it means, but I just love that it's, it's called It's a mix. I think that's crab. I wouldn't remember all the ingredients, but it's so good. We put the little wasabi on it and the ginger. Okay. And you dip it into the sauce, and we also had, we've been there before, and we've had it, the lobster bomb. What's it's, that? It's pieces of lobster uh -huh. fried, rolled up, and it mm. is really good. You all had dessert. Let's start with you, Alec. So we had the uh, the Yama donuts. They're like little, mm. they're like fluffy balls, basically. They're, I, don't, I don't know, what do you what do you say about it? They're like, uh, they're like. <laughs> I'm gonna answer all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to like phone a friend or something. So uh, they're like fluffy balls, basically. They're crusted on the outside. I'm pretty sure they're fried, okay? And then they have like a white dipping sauce. It's like very sugary, it's very yeah. sweet. Probably yeah. condensed milk. Condensed milk, yeah, but it was pretty good. Uh, there it was, sounds like a Thai donut, almost. Yeah, they were basically Thai donuts, but I guess they just called them Yama donuts, because why not, you know? So I had that. They were pretty sweet, but they weren't too sweet. You know, like usually after having so much seafood, you don't want something too sugary. So I think that was like the perfect dessert See, to go to. See, and I do. I feel like if I'm eating clean, I need something really naughty. Really? And dirty at the end. Oh, I can't because then I feel like I just, I just wasted the whole thing. So I just got to like. <laughs> okay. Different schools of thought. Yeah. Yes. What did you have for dessert? I had the Thai donuts also. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. They were really good. Nice. Nice, crispy and sugary on the outside. They're actually Dipping not too sauce. hard to make. Oh. Yeah, one day I'll teach y'all how to do that. Please do that. Larry, you had a cheesecake tempura? Cheesecake tempura. Wow. So, again, deep fried. My cardiologist, Talk about naughty. My cardiologist <laughs> won't like me, but, no. <laughs> but it was really good. Very, did it have a Kenyan kind of sauce to go with it? Oh, yeah, it did. It had a chocolate like sauce that you could pour over it. Oh, I knew you were going to. I just had the a new chocolate was coming out. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. And it was really good. Alec, you had a lot of rolls, which can add up. Yeah. What do you think about the price? Honestly, for the amount of rolls we got, I was actually pretty surprised with like the overall price because we had appetizers, rolls, and dessert, and we spent maybe around like with tip like 130, which really for two people I'd say is not that bad. Like yeah. usually, like if you go to a higher end sushi restaurant, you're going to spend the same and maybe get three rolls and an appetizer. And we also had drinks, so I mean. Oh, what'd you have for drink? Oh, I had a Sapporo. I like the Japanese style beer. Like my dad uh, would always get that one when we were kids, so I, I kind of picked up on that, nice. and it's pretty good. I like it. Did anybody else have any type of uh, either sake or? I beer? had a I had a, um, a lychee martini. Ooh. Ooh. And how was that? That was really good. Well, Alex, Sushiyama was your pick. Sum it up for us, please. Uh, scintillating. It was amazing. Lorraine, I thought it was really really very nice. Uh, I don't usually eat sushi, so there are other things on the menu that you could find if you're not a sushi fan. Larry, sum it up for us. Good sushi, good service, um, a nice place to go to. Well, you can enjoy some sake at Sushi Yama Asian Bistro, located at 7050 West Palmetto Park Road in Boca Raton. They are open daily for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted where the average price for dinner without drinks is about $45. Finally, accountant Larry Levy is ready to pick up the tab at his delicious yet budget-friendly pick. It's located in Coconut Creek and it's called Papa Amigos. Hi, my name is Brian Faith. I am the owner of Papa Amigos. So the brand Papa Migos came about early 2020. My fiance and I decided, you know, who doesn't like tacos and sushi. The location here in Coconut Creek came about because our food truck in 2020 became so busy because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We were an outside brand. We really kind of just 
you know, launched our, our name out there. It really shot off and we, we really needed a, a commissary kitchen. So this was an old land lovers prior to us and we needed a kitchen. It came on market. We were able to purchase this and you know, for a commissary kitchen. A year and a half later, I mean, we have a great restaurant and a great community supporting us. Some of our most popular menu items, kind of one of the main menu items that put us on the map was our birria tacos. We started, you know, our version of the birria tacos as a spinoff. It's a great Mexican dish, and we kind of brought it to South Florida. Papa Migos is a fusion brand of fun food and good vibes. So what is this? Is it a taco bar? Is it a raw <laughs> bar? Explain it to me, Larry. Well, we've been there many times. It started off as a food truck that my wife went to. Uh -huh. And then they opened up this restaurant. And so okay. we've been going there. Um, there We eat mostly the Mexican food, but they also have... Um, so it's not so fused together. It's one or the other, or do they I combine think some they, things? I have just all the Mexican all the time. I haven't went ventured. over there, ventured into the Japanese side. But when I've seen it, it looks really good. So Lorraine, tell me a little bit about Papa Amigos, when you walked in, what was it like? Oh, I just loved the atmosphere. And, and again, I didn't expect what I saw when I came in there. It was just a beautiful bar area and very open feeling to the restaurant, very friendly. Like you said, it's kind of a neighborhood feeling to it. Um, and the, the servers were so wonderful. They, they said, you know, sit wherever you want, just very casual about greeting us. And it was uh, a real good neighborhood feel. Tell me a little bit about location. Right off the main road in a little shopping center on the corner end, plenty of parking. No, no, no issues with parking there. You don't have to valet. No valet. Great. Plenty of parking. They Great. had outdoor seating also. So oh, yeah. did they? That's nice yeah. to have. Yeah, yeah it's have always fun. nice. On yeah. a beautiful day, you could sit out and enjoy a meal. So let's talk a little bit, Larry, about what you had this last time. I know you've been there a few times. So let's talk about the last time that you went. Okay, so we had the Mexican corn. Street corn, Mexican street corn. Street corn. Me Mexican street corn. So we had that which was really good. Last time we had it when was we it were on the cob or off the cob? On the cob. On the cob, so it was called elote. There's okay. different, yeah, if it's off the cob, it's called something. Okay, like. okay, and So did it have cheese and, cheese and, and spices. Uh, spices and, yeah. Mm. And what else, you had it like a surf and turf? Yeah, they have these quesadillas. Usually we have, I think they're called borelli, borella? Um, borriga. Borriga. Yeah. So yeah. it mixed her with that and we had, they called it surf and turf. So they had that meat. What was the surf? Um, shrimp. Okay. So it was really good and it's in the quesadilla. Did you drink anything? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, every day they have a margarita special. So what so was the special when you That day were there? was a kiwi margarita. How was that? Can you taste kiwi through a margarita? Well, not, not really, but a little but bit. The little seeds this, are there probably, yeah. Yum. Yeah, okay. well, we've been there when they've had coconut margaritas, you know. Nice. We always see what the margarita of the day is, I like the this. daily margarita. And what did you have, Lauren? We were there on Taco Tuesday. Yay! Ooh. I didn't know. I, I didn't do know they what celebrate to Taco Tuesday? Yes, they do. And the half price drinks. We had the coconut margarita. It was oh. delicious. Oh, I loved wow. it. You had birria nachos, right? Yeah, on the on that. Oh, it was delicious. I never had that meat before. It was so tender. Oh, the birria meat. Delicious. Yeah, the birria meat. Delicious. Yeah. delicious. We also tacos. had because it was Taco Tuesday. We also had some of their special oh, shrimp Tuesday. taco. <laughs> Shrimp tacos? Shrimp tacos. It was How delicious. Was yeah. Oh, amazing. Were they fried, grilled, sauteed? Uh, they, they tasted like a coconut shrimp. It was oh. like a coconut shrimp taco. Interesting. Yeah, it was very good. Okay. How about you, Alec? So I had the uh, spicy tuna taco. I was like, why mm. not? You know, like, I've tried the Mexican food already, so, like, let me try a spin. Let me do a, an in-between. It was a really interesting take on Mexican and Asian tacos. It was, like, diced tuna and with, like, a spicy mayo sauce on top. Was it like a tartare? Yeah, it was almost like a tartare and a taco, and the taco shell itself was like, uh, I don't know what they're called, but it's like, you know, like that black wrap that they wrap the sushi in? Like a nori? Yeah, it was like a, nor it was like a nori taco shell. Okay. So it was really cool. Uh, the taste was actually pretty good. It was a little too spicy for my liking, but it was really good. For dessert, you said dulce de leche, but how was it plated, the dulce de leche? Do you know? Do you uh, remember your dessert? Yeah, we had the cheesecake. It was home style. Oh, it was dulce de leche cheesecake. Yeah, it was home style homemade cheesecake. And that was probably one of the best cheesecakes I've ever had. It was really rich in flavor. It was thick. And it was a really good portion size, too. You know, to share for two people, mm -hmm. perfect. Well, Larry, Papa Amigos was your pick. Sum it up for us. A favorite go to, quick, always tasty, plenty of food, and we have a good time there. Lorraine? 
I want to go back there for the dessert. It was so delicious. <laughs> Dolce de Leche cheesecake made by the owner's mom was delicious. Alec? I'd say the same. Cheesecake, it's a go-to. If you want dessert, that's a place to go. Okay. You can have your pick of tacos or sushi at Papa Amigos, located at 6370 North State Road 7, Suite 120 in Coconut Creek. They're open daily for lunch and dinner with happy hour Monday to Saturday. Reservations are not accepted. The average price for dinner without drinks is about $40. We've had a wonderful time. I want to thank my guests, Lorraine Marks, Larry Levy, and Alec Vargas. For more about the restaurants and recipes featured in the show, or if you'd like to apply to be a guest reviewer, please visit us at checkpleasefl.com. And as always, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Join us next time for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please South Florida. I'm Michelle Bernstein. Salud, everyone, and I'll Salute. see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Salud. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world.